All righty, all righty. How you feeling, my man? You feeling good? I'm tired, man. I'm tired. You know, I had a great time this weekend. But uh, that's a lot of time in the sun, man. I'm not built like that anymore. I heard it's a pain in the ass. You're like, you're like, I got to park like a mile away, and then they bust you over, and then you're kind of like stuck in there for a while and all that kind of stuff, right? It's like, yeah, I parked like uh, the media parking. It was it was always packed by the time I got there. Uh, and maybe that's my fault. I was not personally willing to get there at nine o'clock in the morning. Just not again, not really my style, but you did have to park kind of a ways down. Um, maybe it would be easier if there were multiple entryways from or ways to access the autodrome from the parking lot to the actual campus, you know, more bridges, but it was really one centralized bridge. Um it wasn't so bad, like once you got in. And I do appreciate I appreciate the on-site parking because as I left every day, I was watching a lot of fans walk, I mean, down past the casino trying to trying to park or or deep into Miami Gardens having parked at random lots. So I, I appreciate the I appreciate where it was located, but it's year one. You know, I think there's a few things that they'll go to the drawing board and say, all right, we can tighten up here. We could do this or that better. Oh, they'll be fine, bro. That was a great event for the first go around. Of course, things aren't going to be perfect, but they'll figure it out. I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was fine. I think there's some track concerns from the drivers, uh, some grip concerns, some loose gravel, loose stones. Um, But other than that, I mean, it was it, it was a quintessentially Miami experience it looked, it looked awesome bro it, it looks awesome incredible. i mean i i watched all the pre-race stuff and and watched the race i had it on one of the tubes and uh i thought it was uh i was impressed man i thought garfinkel and company did a marvelous job with it and i'm sure that they'll make it even bigger and better next year and and they'll you know get the kinks out of course it's your first time around you're not going to be perfect but considering Everything that was in play, I thought they did a really, really good job. Outside of Martin Brundell, who doesn't, you know, that was like, you know, that was a disaster. No. I, I, you know, I was talking about this, right? And I said, get me Angela Ye from The Breakfast Club. Get me Mario Lopez. Get me, you know, uh, Michelle Beisner or somebody. Get me Maria Menounos, you know. But let the old man interview yeah. the F1 drivers because it's what he knows. But get people that are hip and that understand entertainment, sports, and social media, and they, they'll be able to get more out of those interviews. Now, it ended up becoming great because it was such a train wreck that the old man didn't know anything outside of F1. So, yeah, but, I mean, you know, if, if you get me Angela from The Breakfast Club, she would have been hip enough to understand everybody, know everybody, and get something out of some of these interviews. Like, if she gets to Serena, she's going to get more out of Serena than Martin will ever get out of. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. I'm Probably. But I mean, it was Sky It was Sky Sports, I believe. Or it was That was the Sky Sports Spread broadcast. Spread a little money. Get a couple of so, entertainment people. Hire them for the week. Give me a break. I don't know bro. if they're used to – I don't know if they're used to this level of celebrity, first of all, attending a race. From what I was told and what I was hearing – it was unlike any other F1 circuit oh, really? F1 race that wow. as far as one, the, the paddock itself was a lot narrower than it usually is and a lot more crowded than it usually is. But, uh, and then just, like I said, the level of celebrity, uh, I mean, shoot, man, I, I had paddock access. I just, I just stood in one place and in a three minute span, uh, Tony Parker walked out behind me to zero fanfare. Venus and Serena walk out the door down the stairs and to some other garage to zero fanfare. Um, then in a row, it was uh, Gabrielle Union, Dwayne Wade, uh, Paolo Banchero and Travis Kelsey together. DJ Khaled walks out of the uh, out of the stadium with Damson Iris and, and their entourage. It was just like a and that was one space. That's not counting Tom Brady or or you Michael Jordan better. You or been better Morel than or Jay Diggs or I mean Ashton Kutcher and Mayla Kunis. This was just unlike anything that they've seen because it's new and it's Miami. So uh, you know, I think that everybody's gonna kind of observe what this event was this year and say, okay, this is what we're prepared for, this is what we could do better, this is what we need to take advantage of in the nine races to come and maybe more if that agreement gets extended past the 10-year agreement. 
by the way, you, you need to reach out to Sky Sports right right from that reeling off all those names. You were better than Martin. See, you would have you would have at least recognized because he just sees a tall, light skinned brother and he goes, Oh, that must be Pat Mahomes. Let's go. And it's like the dude's six nine. It's like the the, the yeah. first round pick, Paolo from the no, Duke. I'm not gonna say like, in his don't you know that Pat Mahomes is not six nine, dude. Come on. I will say well, Pat Mahomes was there. At least <laughs> Pat Mahomes was there. He was a lot bigger. He's a lot bigger than I thought. I'd never seen him in person before. He's a lot bigger than I thought. But uh, it was actually it was funny. I was walking back. Uh, I was walking back into the media center, and I passed by Paolo and and Kelsey again. And uh, this time I got Kelsey's attention. I was like, "Hey, man, is that Pat Mahomes?" And he looked at me like I was crazy for a second. But then I started laughing. He starts dying. Like, "Oh, bro, chill out, chill out, chill out." They got his ass on TV. Like, uh, he thought it was hilarious. Like, I, I think it's, uh, I, I don't think anybody took offense to it or anything. Oh, no, like no, it. no. Everybody enjoyed the, the train wreck, dude. Everybody loved yeah. the train wreck with the old man because the old man, he just didn't care. <laughs> he was like, oh, oh, yeah, whatever. He, he, he <laughs> just moves out on. There, the wolves, and the poor guy doesn't really. And, and by the way, his producers also suck because it's his producers that were kind of leading him to, oh, no, Pat Mahomes, that might be him over there. That's somebody in his ear, too, because. He doesn't know any better. So the hey, producers look. were also terrible, too, for Sky Sports. Hey, if the NFL would just send the Chiefs overseas, man, we wouldn't have these problems. They're holding all the best teams out. They're holding the premier teams and quarterbacks out. That's what they do. That's the idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your premier it's team. Got you've, going you've, over you've, this year. Got, you've got the luxury of not having to travel to damn Europe if you're a premier team. That's kind of the so so we rip off London and we give them the worst games. So yeah, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Do they know what I mean, Bortles looks like though? I, I bet you they the know Jags who Trevor Lawrence looks like. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. The Jags have become their inherent team, which I mean, really, seriously. That if if I'm London, if I'm England, I would actually like break off any kind of relations with our country. I mean, we would become enemies and things like that. I mean that's really what England should do. They should they should declare war on us for giving them the Jags. Really, seriously. I mean they should bomb the crap out of us just for giving them the Jags every year. That's uh, that's 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 a declaration of war right there. Basically, <laughs> I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of what the equivalent would be the other way around if they sent a Premier League if they if they had a, a Premier League match in America every year a real one not like this. Uh, I think Chelsea and Arsenal are coming in July. Like uh, where the stars probably won't play, and it, it'll be kind of a fanfare and a show. But like, I wonder what it would look like if they said, you See, know, "Here's my problem with that level team." The what it would be like, Brumley and uh, Aston Villa, or Brumley and Br I don't, here's I don't know. The problem. No, no. Here's the problem with that. That that doesn't fly because their worst team in the Premiership is a thousand times better than any team in the MLS. So it just Whoa. doesn't fly because it's still upgraded soccer to what we have here. So it has to be more to the point. The Jags of, are better than whatever American football they play in England. I can, I don't know if there despised? is an organized league. No, no, no. Who's despised in England that they don't like? Like, like the Canadians don't want Justin Bieber. Cubans don't want Jose Canseco. Um, the African American community. Who, who are you kicking out? Come on, kick out somebody. Uh -uh. There's somebody. I'm sorry. No, now, come on. Out. Who are you kicking out? I'm not doing that, but uh I don't know who Why London not? Is. Why not? Well, that's that's the equivalent. Whoever is hated in London or just taught of try, they're giving him <laughs> to us now. You know, it's something like it. it's like if Canadians said to us, Hey, Bieber now is yours, he's American. Forget about it, dude. We gotta blow Canada up off out of the map. It's over. It's over. <laughs> All right, now, I'll tell you for a fact. The Cuban community wants nothing to do with Jose Canseco. We have dumped him. Get rid of him. Okay. I think no I think Canada would take I think Canada would take Justin Bieber right now. I'm not gonna lie, the man got hits. A lot of them. Let's see. Watford versus Norwich. There we go. Thank you, Finns Nation UK. Yeah, Your time to still, stop, baby. Yeah, but that's still better than the MLS. Watford and Norwich would win the MLS title. See what I'm saying? Sure they would. Okay, so Finns Nation UK Club, give me the most despicable English person, band, something that you would want to get rid of and you give it to us. Because that's the equivalent of the Jags. Or Jose Canseco. 
and now so we wait. No, breath. So there's nobody in the African community that you're dumping. Seriously. I'm just not no, going to tell you. You're not going to get me caught up. No, sir. Not me. I'm trying to think of who the African community would want to dump. Oh, OJ. Boom. Bam. There you I'm go. Neither gonna I got it. Or deny that. I am not. He said Manchester oh, come United. Come on. Come on, you're dumping OJ. You know you're dumping OJ. I am not commenting on OJ. Said, oh, he did. Somebody said Jason Whitlock. I personally don't like Jason Whitlock. I'm, so I'm that's, not a Jason, that's not a Jason Whitlock I have, but I have. This is not me speaking on behalf of anybody. I have personal beef with Jason Whitlock. So I would I, get I, rid of him I, as I, a reporter. I, I, he, he uses race like a, like a, like a toy. That's the only thing I don't like about him at times. It's uh, it's it's just look at his resume over the past five years, yeah, and no, that's no, really no. Yeah, you to see. yeah, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a Whitlock. Ooh, Bill Cosby. That's a good one. That's a good one. Come not on. Commenting on that, but I will. Are I can talk for about thirty minutes on how much I don't like Jason Whitlock. But no, you're not Kevin dumping Bill Cosby. Cosby. I love my ESPN job. Cosby. I love my ESPN. Cosby. See this condo behind me? I like living here. Oh. <laughs> I like living here a lot. Does Bill Cosby own the damn building or something? <laughs> he does not own the building, but like Kevin said, I like my ESPN job. I might even love it. That's a good. I might even love my ESPN job. How about those dogs? Cuban, by the way, for the Cuban nation out there, what's the other Cuban besides Jose? We're dumping. It's got to be another one. I don't know, but Jose for sure. I can tell you that. Fine. You don't have the guts to at least dump somebody off the boat. Nope. There's got to be somebody that's gator bait. Absolutely right. <laughs> you are okay? absolutely right. Like I, I, I'm going through the swamp, and we see eight gators. I'm throwing Jose Canseco over and just continuing. And no I just problem. gave you I gave you an insight to my personal life. I told you I oh, don't oh, like oh, Jason oh, Whitlock. Those gators, if there those gators eat up Jose Canseco, don't those gators all of a sudden like become like mutants and they because of all the the things that are inside Jose Canseco that all those uh, chemicals that may end up. Yeah, that may screw up those gators and we may have to deal with those giant gators now and they start growing into like I think they've been around for gators have been around for like a million years. I think their stomachs are pretty straight. They're, they're pretty ironclad there. I, I, I love the guy that throws out Fidel Castro. Bro, come on. I mean, let's get realistic now, okay? Let's not, obviously, that's a, we're talking about like normal people that we would dump. Obviously, Fidel is, you know, come on, bro. Use, use your brain. I mean, it's, <laughs> Fidel Castro. Really? <laughs> All right. Do, do we have any Dolphin news to talk about this week? Because I don't know anything to ask you about the Dolphins this week. Well, I'll tell honestly. you what. I think they came out with the hardest little video of 2022. Uh, that group of them at F1, Teron Armstead, oh. Christian Wilkins, Javon Holland, Jalen Waddle, <laughs> Mike McDaniel, somewhere in the middle of it. I thought it was, I, I thought it was That's tough awesome. as hell. I couldn't stop watching it. That's, I, That's I don't, it's That's the great. cinematography. It's the fits. It's the the slow mo feel to it. It's not even slow mo. They're just walking slow. But the funny yeah, thing yeah, was, uh, <laughs> they're walking through the paddock. And nobody knows who they were. They were hanging out with each other. Like, I, I'm sure when they get out of the paddock, you got to remember the paddock, that's, that's like $11,000 a seat. These are rich, rich people. So, like, they don't oh, know. No, they don't I know. care. I bet you they get out into the campus, they get out in the grandstand, it would be this whole thing. So, but it was just funny to see, like, it was just funny to see these guys who in their own bubble would, would be swarmed with people just kind of like, going unnoticed and so, oh, I, I love I love the experience man it, it was uh it was cool but no we got rookie camp coming up this week so the four drafted guys the UDFAs um you know we're gonna get a little bit of access on the 13th and 14th I believe that's what Thursday and Friday so uh, you know I don't know how much we'll be able to report quite yet we're still getting the uh we're still gonna get we're still getting the media rules for the offseason um but it'll at least be a good opportunity to see Channing Tittle run, to see Eric Azucama, how crisp his route running is and you know how much he 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 meshes with McDaniel's early system. We'll see Skylar Thompson and see, you know, what was the was he worth that seventh round pick? Because I'm 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm leaning kind of towards it being a waste, although a minimal waste at that. It's, it's a seven rounder at the end of the day. But uh, you know, it's just, I, I want to see I want to see these guys on the field, and it's our first football action that we get access to since what is it, January 9th, January eighth yeah. or ninth, the last game of the season. So I mean, just me, an opportunity to be there and, and watch football. I'm happy. Let me let me walk you through something. Just so you'll maybe look at it in a different perspective on the quarterback thing. It's a seventh round pick, right? So the seventh round pick, there's no difference between sixth and seventh round and undrafted free agents. They're pretty much the same. But the difference is that you'll control this guy for a few years because you drafted him. And so just in case you did find some kind of a diamond in the rough, your controlling part of it is a little bit better than it would be as an undrafted free agent. So instead you say, well, you know, some of the guys they did get as undrafted free agents, they probably were looking at those guys in the seventh round and said, well, you know what, if, if this kid has upside to be a backup quarterback, then it's worth it. So we can control him contract wise with that seventh round selection. As uh, a, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get the that, but... that's, that's the only reason why I think, you know, they switched Skyler for something else that they signed that went undrafted. You know what I'm saying? No big deal. We'll, we'll see if I, I just I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if he, if he's there. We'll see, we'll see what his arm is like. I wasn't super, I wasn't super impressed with him at K State, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. And I, I really don't. Really don't speaking of waste of picks, I'm not ready to call Eric Ezukama a waste of pick of a pick. But that was uh, it was a uh, it was like a hedonistic pick. It was like okay, luxury. That, it that was one, like you a, know what. That one, you know, that one, bro. that one's more realistic. I can understand your doubt on it and all that stuff. On a seventh rounder, bro, you're thinking way too much. Wait, I said, I said minimal waste. I said might be a waste of a pick, but a minimal waste at that. Like you, you threw away like the the last crumb of your burrito, or you you threw away a little bit of a water in a water bottle. Like it, it's not like you're you're wasting an entire asset here. It just was like a yeah, like you tossed that. Like I don't think anybody's gonna. You'll freak out out here, but uh, no, you know, the Ezukama pick, like you said, the Ezukama pick, that is a more, you know, that is a more, a pick that we should be more critical of, but right. I want to see right. first. I don't want to, you know, start the kid's career off by hating on him. Like, get a chance. No, no, no. I, I, I get, but I get why you would. Okay, that pick could have that been used oh, on an offensive lineman. I mean, they could have been used for, you know, in a more efficient way, but you can't ever have too many wide receivers. So if he could play, then I'm sure he'll find a spot. Yeah, you know, those are all legitimate arguments on your part. The seventh rounder, I think it's silly. I, I'm not going to worry about a seventh rounder. I, if they actually hit on the kid, then it was smart for them to draft him and not sign him undrafted. So I, I totally get that. But the Ezukama one, that's a kid that obviously there's a vision that they have for him. And so the question is, does the piece land right perfectly in the puzzle that they're looking at? Because clearly he's going to do some of those things that Debo did. That's what they're going to use him for. We'll see. He's just uh, – he's a lot bigger. I don't think he's quite the athlete, quite as shifty as oh, Debo Samuel. No. So oh, no. if they put him in that role, and then they put him in that role. But got to see if he can play first. We'll get the opportunity to at least a little bit later on this week. You know, you don't want to put a whole lot of stock into, uh, into rookie camp. Remember, it's not that role. It's just a – piece of that role because i believe six or seven guys will have a piece of that yeah. deep samuel role that's all i'm saying you know what i mean but I think yeah, like you don't want to, uh, do a little debo and a little parker i think that's the way they're looking at it okay we'll get rid of parker we can get this guy he's cheaper he can do a little bit of what parker does but he can also help us in the run game and other things like that because he brings that to the table so i kind of think that's the way they're looking at it that's just me I uh, like I was saying, I don't want to put a whole way of stock into rookie camp. To be honest, uh, <laughs> to be honest, I, I mean this is my what is this one, two, three, four? Going to be my fifth NFL season. Uh, it's my fourth NFL off season. I've only gotten to see one rookie camp because of COVID. The past couple seasons, there oh, hasn't really okay. been media access to it. But I'd, so the one rookie camp I saw. I could tell you that Brian Burns looked great and Will Greer looked horrible. And both of those ended up being true. But, you know, I think that those are those are exceptions, you know, rather than the norm. Those are outliers. So 
like we'll have a little bit of an idea of where the base level is, but uh, you know, it's not like the end all be all. But it's either way, like I said, it's just exciting to see some football. So we'll get to see that coming up. Love it. Follow him on Twitter at Marcel Louis Jacques so you can get the edge on the Miami Dolphins and go to myedgedrink.com so you can order the finest energy drink on the planet. Zero. I'm talking about zero aftertaste, okay? Not only is it delicious and smooth, zero aftertaste, which will freak you out in 78 calories also, which is a joke. Myedgedrink.com and get 10% off when you use the code Big O. Marcel, as always, thank you, my brother. We'll catch up later on in the week, my friend. Absolutely. Real quick, I see Jay Rodriguez in the comments. That's not what I said. I said Brian Burns was great and Will Greer was horrible. But uh, you have a good rest of the day, man. Appreciate you giving me the opportunity to clear that's consistent right there. They never really listen to what the host is actually saying. So that's consistent right there. So it's a beautiful thing, bro. It's a beautiful hey, thing. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful day. I'm going to go enjoy it outside. Take my dog out. I know he's waiting. There you go. Be good. There you go. And you know Marcel's a great man because he's a dog guy. Dog people are always good people, man. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.